Let's continue problem 3-4a. We've just done journal entries, um, probably something that you wished you were done with. Uh, now it's time to move on to determining whether overhead was over applied or under applied for the period. So here's what we do. We just make a T account for our overhead. Part two or anyway, let's make a T account for our overhead. I just forget what our parts are called here. Uh, a, B, C. It's just weird to have A, B, C as our big parts, and we've just done journal entries labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, G. All right, so we're on to big part B of the question. Uh, and let's just do a T account for overhead and track our overhead. So uh, I'm looking for any debits or credits overhead. Uh, there's a debit to overhead in part C. Uh, maybe I should highlight these. So there's a debit to overhead there, a debit to overhead there. Uh, nothing there, debit to overhead there, debit to overhead there, debit to overhead there, and a big old credit to overhead there. Okay, and that's that's going to be it for our overhead. So each of those items I just want to summarize in my T account. 4,500, 40,000. Seventy two hundred seventeen five thirteen five and a credit of seventy five thousand. Okay, now let's remember what's happening in our T account. On the left side, we're accruing our actual overhead amounts. These are actual overhead. Uh, items that incur that we incurred during the the period. On the right side, this is a summary of all of the overhead we applied for the year, and this is a little bit unrealistic. Remember, our company is going to be applying overhead to every single job we do. So, anytime we have a labor cost that we're putting in a job, we're at the same time applying overhead to that job. So, each job would have different overhead amounts applied. We've just done it all in one step. It was step I, and this is unrealistic, right? Manufacturing overhead costs aren't going to be applied in one step. They're going to be applied throughout the year. Because uh, a lot of times students say, well, why didn't we just use actual overhead? And the answer is we didn't know our actual overhead when we did most of these jobs. Um, so in any event, we'll have on the left side our actual overhead. On our right side of our T account, we have our applied overhead. And let's just figure out the difference here. So if I add up all my actuals, 4,500 plus 40,000 plus 7,200 plus 17,500 plus 13,500, I, I get 82,700 on the left versus 75,000 on the right. So obviously uh, with a T account, you take the big side minus the small side. The big side gets the balance. Our big side here is 82,700 minus 75,000. That's 7,700 on the left. So our actual was 82,7. Our applied was 75,000. Now remember, in a dream world, we're going to have actual and applied be the same right? It would mean our estimate was exactly right. Well, we'd be living the dream if that happened, but it's never going to happen. Um, so we've got to ask ourselves, okay, did we apply too much or too little? But actually, I don't want to say it that way. I want to say, did we over apply or under apply? And the answer is we are under applied by $7,700. So that's our answer to part B. I think I've answered. I can't remember what the question was. B was overhead, overapplied, or underapplied for the period? Underapplied by how much? $7,700. C, record a journal entry to close overhead to costs of goods sold. So what does that mean? Well, if we had done things perfectly, we would have had actual and applied be the same, and therefore this T account would be zero. Because if, if uh, we had applied 82.7 and our actual is 82.7 and T account zero. Basically, C is saying, look, we got it wrong. 
but screw that. Let's make the T account zero. Let's fix this and make our MOH T account zero. So, so to make MOH go to zero, I credit MOH. It's sitting at a debit of 7,700. I want to make it go to zero, so I'm going to credit it to make it uh, zero out. And maybe make it go to zero is a crude way of saying close. I'm going to close the overhead account. And it's a close to cost of goods sold. So what am I going to adjust through? And this is pretty typical. I adjust through cost of goods sold. So I debit cost of goods sold 7700 Had it been the other way, had overhead been over-applied, if I wanted to fix it, I would debit overhead and credit cost of goods sold. I would just do the opposite. Now, why do I adjust cost of goods sold? Well, remember what's happening here. Uh, when we put overhead, apply overhead, we put it into WIP. So I go debit WIP, credit MOH, right? That's the journal entry. That's journal entry I, debit WIP, credit MOH. What we're saying down here is we did it for 75 grand, but if we were doing it right, we would have done it for 82,700, we would have done it for the actual amount. So we should have gone debit WIP 827, credit MOH 827. So we're off by 7,700 bucks and that's what we're trying to fix. But you might say, well, then why don't I fix it here? Why don't I debit WIP uh, and credit MOH to fix it, right? Like rather than debiting COGS and crediting MOH, why am I debiting WIP and crediting MOH? Well, the answer is to do with our flow of inventory. Remember. It goes from raw material to WIP, so we we're adjusting WIP, but by the time we're making this adjustment at the end of the year, presumably we've completed the WIP and it's gone through to finished goods. And in fact, what happens after it goes to finished goods? It goes to cost of goods sold, debit, COGS, credit, finished goods. So the flow is, it goes from raw material to WIP, WIP to finished goods, and then finished goods to cost of goods sold. So what we're saying in this adjustment is we're fixing cost of goods sold. Even though the error happened in our WIP, we're fixing cost of goods sold because it's already flowed out of the company. So we, we need to fix cost of goods sold. So that's why we make the adjustment there. Not every question will have you adjusting that. It might have you adjusting WIP. It might have you adjusting finished goods. It might have you adjusting cost of goods sold or some combo of the three. Cost of goods sold makes the most sense. Uh, uh, depending on the company. Okay, let's leave this video here. In part D, we're going to prepare an income statement for this operation.